I used to respect a lot of the creators I'm going to talk about today. Not anymore. Boy, a YouTuber I know a ton about is becoming a bandwagon. Uh, but it's still too soon to jump on it. I'll just wait a few weeks until it's dead and buried in the dirt. One week later. Nope, still not ready. One week later. Nope, still not dead. One week later. Okay, now it's just right. Now, if you're expecting this video to be a defense of Turkey Tom or me asking him to apologize, it's not. If you expect this video to be me bashing Turkey Tom, you're also wrong. I know a ton about Turkey Tom, I've been a fan of him for a really long time. And I chatted with him here and there, so I want to do a bit of a history on everybody's favorite or most hated turkey. Just a robot! So how did I first hear about Turkey Tom? Well, believe it or not, say it with me now, it dates back all the way to the Pokemon drama. During the whole battle of the Alt CC versus Neo CC, both extremely small commentary communities, a little young fella got caught up in the mix, and his name was Turkey Tom. And yes, this is indeed Turkey Tom. My name is Turkey Tom. At the time, he didn't seem too special to me. He was just throwing around praises and criticisms a lot of people were making at that time in that small little community. I think I can think of a few good channels like Doodle Tones that do a pretty good job. Character stills that Suki FNAF uses. Channels like Commentarian, a channel I've covered in the past, also share the same quality. The videos are lazy, and oftentimes the opinions they display aren't enough to make up for the bad visuals. Now you won't recognize this video because Tom deleted it, but I will link a re-upload of it down below if you want to see the full thing. But later he did kind of remake this video, but focused more on the Leafy clones. Ironically, Pyrocytical shows up in the first five seconds. Almost as if it's an omen of things to come. As of late, the internet has come under attack by an... He made a lot of criticisms about the Leafy Clone commentary community, most of which are generic, but still hold true to this day. And from the ashes of Leafy's dead channel, rose a community of other creators who made similar content to him, but differentiated themselves from his style of content by cutting out the bleach jokes. And it was absolutely awful. Everybody in this community makes a video about the same issue in the same three-day period, repeating the same points and not doing anything to spice it up. They all have to have the same opinion all the time. I would really prefer they make a video about something a bit more vague. Something that's not so specific that the video will only be enjoyable for one week, and after the topic is no longer relevant, I don't give a blue duck about it. They all love to copy each other. It's funny because everybody was doing the same generic defense of Pyrocynical video, and as soon as Tom made one unique video about Pyrocynical, the narrative completely flipped. Everybody was making videos that were very critical of Pyrocynical. And then as soon as Pyrocynical made his response, the narrative flipped again, and everybody started making the exact same generic video on Turkey Tom. I am not mentally ill. Now, the oldest video on Turkey Tom's channel that hasn't been deleted yet is Why Fan Bases Suck. And it's pretty clear from this video and looking at his channel in the early days that he was kind of the I hate everything of the commentary community. Chances are you will have come across one of these disgusting, festering piles of filth. Having a similar art style, joke format, and editing style. I will say Tom has always been really ambitious with his videos. Lip movement, original drawings, good editing from his first video all the way to his newest video. But in some ways, it was a little overly ambitious, with a lot of mistakes popping up here and there. It honestly boggles my mind that someone would go that far and be in that state of mind. Another fanbase, which is arguably worse than the comic fanbase, is the Sonic fanbase. To be fair, if you look through my catalog of videos, I have made a few editing mistakes here and there myself, so no one's perfect. Now it's hard to get an exact timeline of what's going on because so many things got deleted, but around this time, Tom was collabing and getting shoutouts from a lot of big creators, such as Quentin Reviews, The Right Opinion, 
and early SGT Ducky. Fan bases. They can be the best thing in the world granting you a podium in which to speak when you have something to say that a lot of people need to hear. And yes, this is how Ducky used to sound. God, and I thought my robot voice was bad. Around this time, this is when Tom and me probably became the most similar with our content. Both of us were talking about Speechy, Jello Apocalypse, Fox Goodman, and Quentin Reviews. Despite me being one of the first people to talk about Quentin Reviews, almost no one saw my video. I don't know, maybe it was because I had a bad thumbnail or something. But around this time, Tom was starting to get called out by a bunch of other YouTubers such as Mango Common, and even Mr. Enter. Since then, a lot of people have been saying that I cannot take criticism. I don't mean to be the bringer of bad news, but I can, and I do constantly. There are points during which I've said, hey, I shouldn't have called that self-conscious girl fat. I probably should have acknowledged it in my video. I shouldn't have compared her to the Michelin Man. I shouldn't have joked about this guy being a pedophile and then had the jokes fall flat. But there are other points where I say, oh wait, this guy is fucking dumb. Now, to be fair, he did apologize for this stuff. Me joking about, uh, pedophilia. I shouldn't have played with a man's reputation, which everyone seems to think I refuse to acknowledge, even though I tweeted saying that I shouldn't have done it fucking months ago. Good job, Speechy. I'm sorry I compared you to a rubber company mascot. I probably should have mentioned it in a video. Can we stop with the comments about Mangacom and he has the big gap? But even if you apologize, once people are really angry at you, they don't care if you do or not. They're gonna bring up the bad stuff you did, whether you apologize for it or not. A little later, Tom's content started slowing to a trickle, only uploading about once per month. He became a lot less like I hate everything and a lot more like the right opinion. But then he started uploading a lot, almost once per week. He was getting tons of views and gaining subs extremely quickly. The sky seemed to be the limit for him. And then the whole pyrocynical drama happened and you guys know how that went. Long story short, a lot of people thought Pyrocynical was innocent, but then Tom discovered some new information and he brought it to the public. Pyrocynical later responded to Turkey Tom indirectly, and Tom made a response video where he said a few things that rubbed people the wrong way. Ivory asks Pyro when he can visit him on May 6, 2017. The last reference in text to sexual roleplay prior to this was April 29. Pyro claims that he invited Ivory to the event indiscriminately, but reading the messages, we can see that this isn't possible because Ivory initiated the conversation. It would contextually make no sense. The actual messages indicate they were looking for any chance to meet up, and the event simply happened to be a convenient time to do it. Sive Morton is then brought in to downplay this stating that it was a public event and a lot of people who Pyro didn't know were invited as well. This is all irrelevant. Do you think Ivory would have just flown home after a night of underage drinking? And do you think that nothing sexual happens after public events? This doesn't refute anything that I said. You were frequently messaging this person over Discord about your fetishes, talking about your kinks with them and what you're interested in, to the point where Ivory was comfortable disclosing his sex life to you. Even though it's framed as a refute, nothing Sive said changes anything. Does this mean Pyro had plans for something to happen? Not necessarily but it's not off the table. Pyro has a pattern of behavior in which he rides off the benefit of the doubt. He will fabricate the best excuse he can based on the known evidence, then adjust it when more information comes out. And his original response on Reddit was full of victim blaming and twisting the truth without really taking responsibility for what happened, which I stand by, and that's why so many people went on to pick it apart. If he was so happy to victim blame the first time, why am I supposed to believe that all of a sudden this current apology is sincere and he feels so bad? But the DMs seem to be alluding to Pyro and Ivory forming some kind of relationship at the time. Pyro cynical subreddit began absolutely exploding and trying to find some way that Pyro could be innocent. Honestly, it just doesn't look like the activity of someone who is completely innocent, or someone who has nothing to hide. Once analyzing the evidence, there is no other conclusion that I can reach other than that Pyro cynical is full of shit. But despite everything Tom has done, comparing Spetchy to the Michelin Man and then pretending like he didn't until someone called him out, making pedo jokes about Mr. Enter, and everything he said about Pyrocynical, I can forgive Tom for one reason and one reason only. He hasn't done anything to me yet. Oh wait.
While I'm burning bridges, more or less, a perfect example of three of these videos are these speechy videos by Just a Robot, one of which doesn't really count as it's simply a comment response, and two of the videos he didn't really add anything that hadn't been said before and basically just repeated things that other people had said much better than he could, which is a pretty consistent theme for his videos. I'm not saying that they're necessarily bad, they make alright background noise while I'm editing, but they're just so formulaic and he rarely adds anything apart from a few jokes to the topics that he commentates on. No hard feelings, buddy. Your videos just leave me with a sad semi and a handful of lotion. Cripplingly mediocre, if you ask me. I have a perfect plan of how Tom could have easily got out of this situation. But because he said these mean things about me, uh, I'm not going to share it with him. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I still like Turkey Tom's content. Has he made many, many, many mistakes? Yes. But I still have a lot more respect for him than most commentators because at least he tries to be original with his content and not jump on trendy subjects. Not saying he does that all the time, but he at least tries. Now, to be fair in Turkey Tom's video, at no point did he directly call Pyrocynical a pedo or a groomer. However, a lot of people felt like he was implying Pyro was one of them because of how he worded things. Was Tom's point that he doesn't think Pyro is completely innocent and we need to keep looking into things until we know the truth 100% for sure? Or were his intentions to expose Pyro whether he was guilty or innocent? Well, I'm not a mind reader and I don't know for sure. Given his past with Mr. Enter, I can see how some people might come to that conclusion. And given his past with Speechy, I can see why some people don't think Tom is a truthful person. I will say this, I certainly don't think Tom is a coward. I mean, he was going up against the biggest person in the commentary community. He took a gamble, and unfortunately for him, he lost. But I certainly don't think Tom is a coward. At least in comparison to most of the commentary community who just go with whatever opinion is popular at that time. Of course, this is just my subjective opinion and I don't speak for everybody. I don't think Tom is done. He will be coming back. And I think that's for the best because honestly, he makes the commentary community so much more interesting. But I will say this, Tom, be a lot more careful with your wording because when people are angry at you, anything you say can and will be held against you. To everybody who's making basically the same video on Turkey Tom without adding, like, anything new to the conversation, well, I think Tom said it best himself. I'd like to be honest with my audience about my thoughts all the time. I am by no means saying that it's not okay to make a video about someone that other people have made videos about before. Hell, if I said that, considering how late I am to some of my topics, then I would be the biggest hypocrite in the world. But just, don't make shit videos! Add something to the conversation, do something neat with your video, and if you can't do that, then don't make it. I know those views can be tempting, trust me, but just try and do the right thing instead of getting hungry for attention, subscribers, and AdSense. Unless you don't care about what other people will think of you and just want money, in which case, fuck it, go right ahead. If you make good content, the money and success will come in time, regardless of if you make videos about trends or not. If you're someone who listened to Tom and later deleted your video on Pyrocynical and apologized, good on you. <coughs> But if you did that, then started bashing Turkey Tom, look in the mirror. Tom has burnt a lot of bridges with people, and he has said things that do make people really, really angry at him. My recommendation for Tom is this, be a little bit nicer with your content. Being edgy and playing with fire is fun until you get burnt. And boy, howdy were those burns third degree. Oh, that's a lot of damage! People are angry at Tom right now, but eventually they'll move on to talking about someone else. Do I think Tom deserves to be called out for his behavior? Absolutely. Do I think he should be hated forever and be kicked out of the internet? No. I mean, people used to really hate Keemstar a few years ago, and now he's more beloved than ever. If they all keep up their current trend, then every time they put out a video, they will have to live with the fact that it has a built-in timer, and once it expires, nobody will care about it. But the most important question about Turkey Tom is this. And why is your name Turkey Tom, but you're not a turkey? When Tom returns to YouTube in a few months to a few years time, he will mold himself into a great YouTuber. I'm sure of it. But at the same time, I think this little turkey will get himself into a big drama again in the future.
I really hope this video doesn't get taken the wrong way as me defending Turkey Tom. The main reason why I'm trying to make this video is because Tom really proves the problems we have with the commentary community. You have to embrace mediocrity. It's easy to make a video bashing someone that everybody else is already bashing, but it's extremely dangerous to make a unique video that goes against the grain. Did Tom make a mistake? Sure. But Tom, don't be calling people a pedo anymore. And especially don't say shit like this. Do you think Ivory would have just flown home after a night of underage drinking? And do you think that nothing sexual happens after public events? Because that can definitely be taken the wrong way. I think Pyro said it best himself. There needs to be a middle ground. I would like to thank everybody donating to me on Patreon. Even in these troubled times, you guys find it in your heart to give me money, and I thank each and every one of you for it. I'm thinking about using my real voice more often in my videos because people say I sound like a robot even without the filter. And a lot of people do want to subscribe to me, they just really hate the robot voice. I'm also getting a little sick and tired of people mistranslating what I say and maybe if I use my real voice it will be a little bit more clear to people. Now a lot of you might be confused as to why I enlisted my most recent video, Groomer, Grooming, and Groomers. Well, as embarrassing as it is to say, I actually got Call Me Carson and Mini Lad mixed up. I thought Call Me Carson was the one who made an apology and everybody was hating on it and not Mini Lad. God, I can be so fucking stupid sometimes. And I understand that Call Me Carson and the girl only had a two-year age gap. They were both teenagers. Some people think what he did was absolutely disgusting and some people don't. Am I saying Call Me Carson is completely innocent and he didn't do anything wrong? No. But I think using the term groomer to describe him was a bit too uncalled for. It's also way too serious of a topic and I don't feel like it fit on my channel. In a legal sense, however, he does have possession of cheese pizza, if you know what I mean. But I much prefer to talk about someone like Turkey Tom than I do Call Me Carson, because I actually know a lot about Turkey Tom. I'm not saying the video I made got a ton of backlash, the like to dislike ratio is mwah, magnifico. And I also highly doubt it I would have gotten a lot of backlash for that video, it just didn't feel right to me personally. The main point I was trying to make in that video was as soon as you blow out the candles on your 18th birthday cake, avoid hitting on anyone below the age of 18, even if they're only a few days younger than you. Not because I think it should be illegal or anything, but it's a very touchy subject and people will rage about it. Some people even thought in that video I was trying to imply Pyro was a groomer because I made a comparison between him and Call Me Carson when I really wasn't. After this video, I don't want to be talking about pedos, age of consent, groomers, or anything like that because it's such a touchy subject. Being accused as a groomer or someone who's into underage kids is the worst thing you can be accused of on the internet. And the second worst thing you can be accused of is someone who falsely accuses people of those things. After this video, I'm not going to be uploading for the rest of the month on YouTube. I will be back and I will be uploading on the first Tuesday of the next month. But until then, I'll catch you guys next time.